We're still a month and a half away from polls closing in the 2020 election, but make no mistake, voting is already underway. More than 58,000 people have cast their ballots for the general election, mostly from North Carolina, which was the first state to start sending out mail ballots. Take a look at this calendar. You will see that in-person early voting starts as early as this week in some states. Minnesota, South Dakota, Virginia, and Wyoming open polling places Friday Friday, and New Jersey begins on Saturday. In total, 38 states plus Washington, D.C. allow early voting, but the rules vary, so check with your Secretary of State or local elections board for specifics where you live. I want to bring in Andrea Haley. She is the CEO of Vote.org, a nonpartisan nonprofit running a nationwide voting registration and get out the vote effort. Welcome to you, Andrea. Thanks very much for joining us. What are some of the biggest obstacles people face voting this year that they may not have had encountered in other years? Well, this year, we know that it's a little bit more complicated. We're having elections in the middle of a pandemic. So voters are going to have to spend a little more time this year uh, planning out their vote. There's several different ways people can participate, whether it's vote by mail or early voting or in-person voting. And we track all of that at vote.org, uh, where people can go and see their election information in real time. Many states have you know made changes this year and how they administer elections and so we just want to make sure everyone has the information they need to navigate the process and what else are you doing to help people get around some of these roadblocks is it really just about educating folks on what may be available where they are well on our site people can verify that they're on the voter rolls it takes two seconds on your mobile phone you can register to vote, you can check, uh, you can request your absentee uh, ballot if you need to through vote.org. You can also volunteer to be a poll worker. Um, and so these are some of the things that everyone needs to be able to do this year. And then you can go to the site to look for information or sign up for text reminders. So we can remind people you know, what they need to vote on election day or before, um, what kind of IDs they'll need, uh, what what the rules are in their state um, and set those reminders and make sure that people are aware. We know that confusion itself can be a voter suppression tactic, and we aim to solve that. Yeah, well, just this past week, we saw a federal appeals court reinstate a rule requiring people with felony convictions pay their court costs if they want to vote in November. That's just one example of ways that people can be kept from voting this fall. How concerned is your organization about voting access nationwide, and what are you doing about it? We're very concerned about voting access nationwide. We know that we have systems in place in this country that were never uh, meant to get to 80% voter turnout. They didn't imagine a world with that high of a turnout and then build the system backwards. Instead, uh, we have a system that makes it so that people have to jump through a series of hoops to participate. And I think that um, our organization is doing everything we can from uh, vote by mail education pieces that we're texting people to tell people how they can vote by mail this year if they live in a state that isn't where people aren't used to a high amount of vote by mail, um, to you know, standing up different media campaigns in real time. We're adjusting to reach voters where they are. We know that when it comes to students and young voters who are also um, you know, historically uh, receive higher amounts of suppression, uh, that we need to do extra work, yet people aren't on campuses. So we're having to, um, or at least campuses aren't 100% full, so we're having to try to reach people through streaming services, through texting, through signups, through student athletes, through um, school platforms, working with schools themselves to make sure that they're disseminating voting information. So there's a whole myriad of ways that we're working with voters this year to make sure they have what they need to navigate the process. But you know, when you see things like what happened in Florida, it makes you really upset and it shows you how much work there is to go um, in really lifting barriers. I think that we're also working with a lot of companies to lift barriers and encouraging over 700 companies that have joined vote.org already to have paid election day off for workers, um, which is something that could really help the process. In the state of Maine, we've filed suit, um, hoping that we can open up access to the ballot box for first-time voters. Um, so, you know, I think that 
there are 50 different systems by which people are administering elections in this country. And um, because we, you know, have to adhere to every state rule and we're looking for those moments and those places where we can really push and open up access, knowing that um, that this is a, a difficult and challenging environment. Yeah, there are so many hurdles. What's the most important piece of advice you can offer to our viewers to make sure that their vote counts? Go to vote.org, find out the rules and regulations in your state. Um, make sure that you're on the voting rolls. Use our verification tool. It takes two seconds. Uh, go ahead and this year, if you plan to, you know, uh, vote by mail, get that application in. If you, if you live in a state where you have to apply, get it in and get it in now. Once you organize yourself, organize your home, your friends, your family, and the biggest blocker really is time. So think about the organizations and affiliations that you have and where you can really get voting information out to the highest number of people. It's one thing when vote.org reaches people, we do a great job at it, but this year to make sure that there is an increase in turnout across the country, uh, it's going to take you talking to your loved ones and talking to the organizations you are affiliated with uh, to make sure everybody has the voting information uh, that they need. Vote.org stands ready to be a resource. All right, vote.org CEO, Andrea Haley. Andrea, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Really appreciate it. Thank you.